Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to your Lunch Break Live. My name is Ivana Hurinku, if you're new here, and if you're not, thank you for coming back. Today is Monday, April the 18th, and today we're talking about something you might not expect in the spring, and that is football. Today, I am joined by two of our columnists, Roy S. Johnson and Joseph Goodman. We are here today to talk about about the return of the USFL. Now, the relaunch of the USFL was this past weekend in Birmingham, where these games will be played for the next several weeks. Now, this has been something that has gotten a lot of hype leading up to it, and I think this weekend uh, really proved people's expectations one way or the other. So, Joe, Roy, thank you today for joining me to talk a little bit about this. I know there's a lot to break down, but you both actually went to the game on Saturday, to the first game, which was both the first game of the USFL's relaunch and the first game for the Birmingham Stallions, which are now, uh, again, we are an undefeated team here in Birmingham, uh, we can say. So, Joe, I'll let you go first. Tell me a little bit about the game and just what was the experience like? Did you have a good time? Yeah, uh, it was great. Um, you know, my biggest first impression is it's just a huge win for Birmingham to have the Birmingham Stallions and Protective Stadium and the city showcased on national television on two different networks uh on a saturday like you can't beat that as far as you know advertising the city and promoting it so i mean huge win for birmingham as far as the stadium uh you know protective stadium is amazing and there were a lot of people there for that first stallions game i was really impressed uh downtown was full of cars um very hard to find parking but uh, a lot of people showed up after the rain. You know, it was rainy on Saturday, and I was kind of kind of wondering, like, what the crowd attendance was going to be like because I drove all the way from uh, A-Day at, at Alabama, you know, just to be there for the first USFL game. So I kind of did the double header, and I was surprised by a lot of the number of people. I parked beyond Phillip, the old Phillips High School, which is several, I don't know, six – it's probably about – half a mile away from the stadium. So, uh, you know, there was tons of people there. The event staff at the BJCC uh, were kind of overwhelmed. It seemed like there were so many people. And one bizarre thing, the USFL announced attendance of 17,500. There were way more people there than that. I don't know if they were counting the children that got in for free because kids 15 and under get in for free. I'm... Uh, I don't really know, but they said over 40,000 tickets were sold and distributed, but they counted 17,500. I can tell you that there was at least 30. It felt like there was probably over 30,000 there, maybe even 35,000. So the whole bowl was full uh, and then they had to open up the upper deck. And then by halftime, I would say that the upper deck was all, about half full or maybe even over half full. So, uh, great environment. And for next Saturday's game between uh, Birmingham Stallions and Houston Gamblers is at 6 p.m. Like, I totally expect the Birmingham to show up for that game and sell it out. I don't know about all these other teams. Uh, you know, it's bizarre having this eight team league in, in one place. Um, but as far as Birmingham Stallions go, I think that definitely the area is going to show up for these games. Roy, I know you went as well. What did you think about this? You all co-sign everything that Joe said. I, maybe Fox had a clicker out there or something. I don't know how they counted uh, bodies. I know at one point uh, there was a there were a couple of glitches in terms of getting people in. Uh, the the free tickets weren't necessarily uh, logging in the way they were supposed to. So you know, as you would expect, there was some early game, early season uh, glitches that will have to be addressed. But all in, uh, for me, that first night harkens back to several months ago uh, when the conversations about this league coming to Birmingham began and all of the things that had to fall into place and almost fell out of place uh, over the last several months for that night to even happen. So even before the game, uh, I thought Birmingham had won just the fact that the game was coming to fruition. There were public officials, there were uh, people in the business community who were skeptical and rightly so, the city had been burned so many times about, with spring football that there was some concern and skepticism about here we go again. But I give credit to uh, both the executives at Fox uh, who were patient, uh, who were diligent about walking through everybody's concerns, as well as public officials who 
everybody kind of put their egos aside uh, and they put their political affiliations aside. You know, we've said many times that this is really the first time in a long time that uh, politicians from every side of the aisle came together in this region. And ultimately, after overcoming their skepticism and overcoming their own political differences, came together to uh, to try to ensure that this happened. And it almost didn't several times. It almost fell apart. So uh, being there on Saturday was was an experience uh, looking back at how that all came together and just feeling like, wow, this was something unique and special that hopefully the region can build on the yeah. sense of regional cooperation. We had, you know, I ran into fans who were staying in Hoover, uh, fans who were staying in the city. I ran into fans from five or six different states from as far away as Seattle. There was a great family of, uh, of a, a, a husband, a wife, and two kids who were wearing Bengals jerseys. I walked up to them, I said, what are the Bengals have to do with the USFL? They said, you know what, we just are football fans and we just wanted to be here for the weekend. So, uh, Ivana, you were out Friday night and I'm sure you saw Places were kind of packed. People did come into town for this. I ran into some folks from New Orleans, folks from Texas. Uh, that may not be able to be replicated every week, but certainly from a what it took to get here perspective, how it almost didn't happen from the cooperation of public officials who often don't even talk to each other. Uh, it was a win for Birmingham, and now it's something to build on. Uh, certainly it wasn't perfect. We've heard that uh, and also, you know, the television ratings were decent, that both NBC and Fox uh, got about 3 million, 2.9 million viewers, which we read on the story is comparable to the NBA playoffs for the first round. So look, you know, building on this, uh, I think sat Sunday was probably a little atypical too in that it was Easter, but don't expect the big crowds for the games that aren't Birmingham Stallions. Uh, but clearly the crowd was a factor in the Stallions comeback. I mean, that was Pretty good football, right, Joe? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and we can all be happy and, and blessed that the politicians didn't screw it up. That's great. So good for them. Yeah. <laughs> Look, yeah. everybody gets everybody gets a kudos around here, I'll say. Now, something that is interesting, too, with this relaunch of the USFL is Fox Sports owns this league. Right. They are committed again. It's offering one hundred and fifty million dollars over the next several years committed to offering that to the league. But Roy, tell us a little bit. And I know when you first reported on this, I believe it was maybe in October. It was last fall. You reported on this return or at least the uh, perspective return, as you say, almost didn't happen. You talked about this. And I remember you coming on here, you explaining it to me and people saying, Roy, you have lost it. What are you talking about? But then you really broke it down and said, look, this is not necessarily dependent on selling tickets. This is not dependent on people in Alabama, in Birmingham, or from other states, from other teams coming and actually showing up, buying a ticket and sitting in a seat. So tell me the just the business part of this and kind of give people who are new to this relaunch of the USFL an idea of what it's about this time. Absolutely. So this is a very, very unique business model uh, that is being tried by Fox to to give this incarnation, this new USFL, an opportunity to work. And here's why it's different. First and foremost, this is a television play. The success of this operation will mostly depend on viewers. They are investing in this to have television programming in the spring when you're really the only sports, you, you're done with the Masters, you've got NBA and hockey playoffs. So the NBC and, C and Fox feel like there's a real opportunity to get sports fans that are crazy about football, particularly football fans, at least to sit in front of their television sets in the spring. That's what this is primarily about. Uh, and they certainly want the stands to be full. But I was pretty uh, uh, surprised on Sunday as I watched games on television. They showed wide shots. They weren't didn't seem like they were afraid to show that, hey, the stands weren't empty. They were focusing on the football. And as Joe and I talked about, it was pretty good football all around. So the model isn't typical in that they were trying, they're trying to generate revenue from ticket sales and local sponsorship. This is like, like an incubator. They've been calling it a bubble, but it's really kind of an incubation uh, project, which also allows them to keep costs low. All eight teams are in Birmingham. They're all staying across the street at the Sheridan. Uh, they're playing in two stadiums in Protective and Legion Field. So keeping all the teams here uh, really keeps costs down. There's not rents in other cities. There's not marketing in other cities. It's all about a TV play that uh, Fox hopes will generate sufficient ratings to justify uh, this $150 million expenditure that you know will attract football fans to television screens. 
and they've been giving tickets away. Uh, you, as you mentioned, if you're 15 and under, you get in free. Uh, tickets are only $10, so there's no barrier to going. This weekend, we did have weather. We had weather rolling through on Friday night, uh, which was a little bit of a, de of a detraction uh, from Saturday. Sunday was Easter. So we'll see going forward. We'll probably have a better idea like how much fans will support this after about three or four weeks. But again, the model is not dependent on attendance. It is more dependent on viewership. Yeah, exactly. You know, Joe, you... Joe, you said a couple of days ago that this is a little crazy, right? You said this is, but it's crazy enough that it might work was kind of your uh, your take in a column you wrote several days ago. So tell me about that. Why is it crazy? And again, do you think it's crazy enough to work? Well, we'll see if it, if it works out. You know, I, I think it's, I think no one really knows what to expect at this point. But, you know, they're all in one place, didn't it? And they're saving a lot of money. And, and we all have to remember, like Roy said, it's owned by Fox. Like this, you think of it as a reality TV show, okay? Like that's kind of how you kind of have to approach what they're trying to do here with this experiment. And, you know, <laughs> this is an interesting tidbit. So after the Stallions game, I was hanging out um, by the gate where the players were leaving. And I, I, I talked with a couple of the guys and – you know, they were all going to stay at those hotels across the street. Um, but the hotels are actually charging the players to stay there $75 a night, which is like $2,600 a month. And so uh, a lot of the players now have uh, gone in on short term leases with teammates uh, for apartments around town. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's kind of like one of the behind the scenes things um, <laughs> that I just find really interesting. Uh, you know, whether or not you think like <laughs> the Fox or the USFL or whatever should be paying for these guys to stay in the hotel is like regardless of the fact. Um, but it's interesting that these guys are now moving out across the city, you know, and kind of uh, anchoring down for the long haul, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the fee, the, the per night charge is one hundred and fifty dollars a night. The USFL is paying half of it. Uh, but once they do the math, hey, yeah, the guys got together and say, hey, I can do better uh, with an apartment or maybe another hotel or maybe staying with family. At the end of the day, wherever they stay generates tax revenue. So the city doesn't care where where they stay as long as they stay somewhere. Yeah, these well, right. These, also, these guys, as... so the, these guys are making fans probably would like to know these guys are making forty five hundred dollars a week uh, base salary. And then they get eight hundred and fifty dollars win bonus for every win, you know, so that uh, kind of is an incentive to go out and, and try to win all these games and not just go through the motions. Um, and, and going back to what you said earlier about the crowd. Yeah, I definitely think that uh, Birmingham's support in that game against the New Jersey Generals helped them in the second half. Uh, the offense was non-existent and then they made the switch to Jamar Smith at quarterback and he really helped lead that comeback in the fourth quarter. So that was really fun to see. Another really fun, interesting thing is the fact that Birmingham Stallions kicker, Brandon Aubrey, uh, never he, played in a game, <laughs> he never played in a professional football game until that night. And he made all four of his extra points, um, and they won by four points. So <laughs> it's just so fascinating. Like, I didn't even know if he had played in a football game. I think he was a soccer player. He played uh, in Notre Dame. He was a soccer that's, player. That's, in that's what I think the the opportunity for Fox is. And one thing we haven't talked about is the players. This is an opportunity for a bunch of guys who really so far, some of them may have had a cup of coffee in the NFL, but really an opportunity for them to showcase themselves, uh, perhaps to be able to play in the fall. And let's not overlook that fact. So I think they're going to play hard if they're smart. I mean, the $4,500 and the 850 bonus is real, but you're on national television. So if you ever wanted a shot to play in the NFL, this is where you showcase yourself. And, and if, it, if I could make any recommendations to Fox is I want to hear more about these players. I want to hear more about the guys. I want to see almost like, you know, when the Olympics, they do the uh, up close and personals about the athletes that really give you a sense of who they are. We've got a lot of young men with dreams in town. Some of them are, are, are read about one where he's getting his degree, he's trying to go to school at the same time. I bet there's some great stories about the individuals that they can share that may help people care even more about players who aren't necessarily stallions. 
because they've seen that what this young man is trying to do, seen what they've gone through to try to get here. So uh, I'm looking, I'm, I'm really rooting for the young men to be able to have this opportunity to showcase themselves and their talents and give themselves another shot at fulfilling their dream of playing the NFL. Or just playing the USFL for their whole career. <laughs> Absolutely, well, $4,500 you know, a week. <laughs> look, I'll, I'll take that. I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll try out for that one. You know, the, uh, and you laugh, both of you laugh. Nobody believes me here, but I think that, you know, we you bring believe up everything a good, you say, Ivana. Come on. <laughs> you, know, you, you both bring up a good point because there are so many young men in the Birmingham and just Alabama area who have grown up playing football, who do not remember a time when they were not playing football. And again, if that dream is reaching the NFL or just pro football in general, this is, giving them an extra opportunity again to showcase their skills or as joe said stay in the usfl stay close to home and stay at least in this bubble right now for the next you know little bit here in birmingham so i wanted to ask as well joe what do you think is next for the usfl we saw a pretty good opening weekend again though you mentioned saturday was a day you drove back a lot of people probably did not do that even if they did want to go to the birmingham stallions game they probably weren't going to beat it back from Tuscaloosa to get to Birmingham to see that game. Sunday was Easter. So it was a little bit of a uh, scheduling wise, maybe not the best days for an opening weekend. How do you think this is going to play out? Well, I think next Saturday I'm going to, I'm predicting a sellout for the stallions because another thing you have to remember uh, this past week for the first game was that the Savannah bananas were in town at Rickwood field and they sold out 10,000 people. Uh, you know, they're kind of like a barnstorming, like baseball version of the Harlem Globetrotters that are really popular. And so they had 10,000 fans at Rickwood at the same time as the Birmingham Stallions football game. Uh, you know, this next weekend, there are going to be a lot of people in town for Talladega because that's on Sunday. And so I think that for the Birmingham Stallions, six o'clock against the Gamblers is going to sell out a protective stadium. So like immediately, I like in the very short term, I think that's what's next for the USFL is they're going to have a sellout on Saturday, which is great for Birmingham and great for the product on television. Uh, you know, really, I'm hoping that this bubble season model um, works and and they can stay they, at least part of the league can can stay here in Birmingham for next season because it's great for the city um, and. Fox Sports is saving a lot of money logistically, uh, not having to fly around the country and, and, and produce everything. You know, they, they only have to have one stadium essentially, you know, as their studio. And two I don't stadiums really... and, and don't have to drive those massive production trucks around the country. I, right. mean, I think they're going to give this every opportunity to work. Uh, and even you know, no decisions are being made about next season. Obviously, they got to get through this season. Uh, I could certainly see if everything works out this year that there are at least four or five teams here next year. I think it'll depend on whether a local uh, ownership or investment group wants to bring their team to that city. So they're using this as a showcase for you know, some local investor to say, hey, I'd love to bring the gamblers to Houston, or hey, I'd like to bring the generals up to, to New York. Uh, but if that doesn't happen and the model works here, uh, they'll be certainly happy to keep those teams in Birmingham. But that's getting a little bit far ahead right now. It's only been one week. They got to get, uh, you know, it, as much as it's not an attendance model, uh, Birmingham needs to represent and show yeah, you know, for, sure. talk for years about wanting to be a, a pro town. Well, here it is. You have the squadron, a G League team. You got the uh, USFL here now. It is time to uh, put up or shut up, Birmingham. It's time because it's time to stop talking and start showing up. If in fact this is something that you truly want the city to represent, right now sports is driving growth here in Birmingham. You've got uh, the the NCAA tournament early rounds coming next year. Uh, you've got the, the Jackson State three three games coming over the next three years, I think not this fall, but the next two years. So it, it is, this is, sports is now the foundation upon which this city is driving its growth. Uh, but it really is dependent upon people coming out and supporting. Yeah. It's all about, it's all about the fans, you know, and, and you left out the Birmingham Legion FC, the soccer team. Right. Absolutely. My bad. I will say My that bad. on a protective stadium, they did put up a permanent sign uh, that says Birmingham Legion FC now under home of the UAB Blazers. So that was really nice to see on Saturday, too. Um, but, yeah, 
you know, there are a lot of sports options in this town and it's only going to get as big as the fans support. So it's up to it, initially, like ultimately it's up to the fans to go support the teams. Um, yeah, and, the USFL is not dependent on it, but other right. entities will be, they'll be watching when they see empty stands. They may wonder if the city really is ready to support uh, football in this town. So it, it, again, it's early making no projections, making no judgments at this point. I think week one was a win for everybody. Uh, it may have been small W on some some uh, categories and big W on others, but you, everybody wants to take that and build upon it and see what happens over the next few weeks. Yeah, definitely a big win, I think. And, and I, you know, I really believe that there are going to be tons of fans out next Saturday because- I know you're going right there to the bowl, to the to the sellout, huh? The top yeah, of the no, bowl, the top hey, of protective, huh? There was a buzz Saturday <laughs> and it was a lot of fun for fans. So, you know, People talk. I heard this thing too yeah. that that they sold tickets in all fifty states. I, I said I'm really skeptical about that, but uh, <laughs> I mean, like Alaska, who bought tickets in Alaska, Hawaii, but even <laughs> Vermont. I mean, I guess, they, but uh, I heard several times that tickets were sold in every state. What that means, I don't know, but it was a, there's another quirky fact that makes you go, hmm. Maybe you know maybe there are here. people there. There are some Birmingham. There's some Birmingham Stallions fans, I guess, in Alaska. You know, you can be fans across the country. I've got my. We'll we'll pull it out. I have my all of my 49ers gear here, here. You can be fans for across the country, Roy. I take that a little bit personally here. So maybe um, they're but a again, item. Yeah. Hey, hey, Birmingham Stallions, America's team. See right. <laughs> Calling it right here. <laughs> Calling it right here. Now, these games are going to be playing in Birmingham for the uh, next, Roy, how many weeks are, are we going to say here? That all of these games altogether. in Birmingham. And then, the, uh, unfortunately, because of a conflict with the World Games, the playoff, the three playoff games will be played in Canton, Ohio. But we've got 12 weeks of football leading up to that. 12 weeks of football. All these games in Birmingham played on the weekends at both Protective Stadium and Legion Field. You can find all of that information on AL.com. We will leave all the links here for you to do so. Roy, Joe, this has been fun. Thank you so much. You've convinced me now that next weekend I have to go. I have to contribute to that predicted sellout, Joe. Um, Got to get myself there and, and experience it for myself. Yeah, get there early so you can get your parking. <laughs> Isn't it the truth, Roy? Thank you all so much. Everybody watching, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow.